Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, back with the Southeast Asia Animal Pack DLC showcase for Planet Zoo, bringing you the final episode. That's right, this mini-series is going to come to a close after this episode because today is the day we show the last couple of animals that are left to show. Uh, we will be adding the Malayan tapir, we'll also be adding the giant leaf insect. Uh, we'll take a look at them, we'll read both of their Zoopedia entries, and we will see how they kind of behave in their spaces as well. Uh, but with them added in, that'll be it. That'll be it for this uh, showcase miniseries. I hope you all have enjoyed your uh, time with the channel. If you're you know, new to the channel, I hope you've enjoyed your time with the miniseries, whether you're new to the channel or you've been with us for a while. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed your time, is what I'm getting at. Now, with this done, it's time to return to our sort of regularly scheduled programming, and that is the Franchise Mode Let's Play and Elite Zoo South. I thought a great way to get back into the groove of things there would actually be to start off with a live stream. So, the next sort of regularly scheduled episode time slot will be the same time, but we're going to be going live. It's similar to the last time we went live. We'll spend some time, we're going to chill, we're going to hang out, we're going to uh, look at the uh, zoo, kind of get our head back in the right mind space. I know I need it, uh, just to get back in, like, sort of in the right, again, mindset, I guess, uh, to go back in a franchise mode and whatnot. But we'll also be doing a bit of a trade session, because we've got a full trade center, so we'll do a bit of a trade session as well. So again, folks, at the regular scheduled time when an episode would release, we are instead going with a live stream. It'll be like last time. It's going to be a good time. I had a great time last time with the live stream. It was a while ago now, so uh, looking forward to recreating some of that magic, let's call it. Uh, but that is the future. I just wanted to mention that announcement. I do it now. I do it once after the time lapse. I want to make sure everybody who's watching various parts is aware of what's going on. Um, and I will be, again, I'll be tweeting it out and stuff as well, so follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description down below. It is a great place to stay up to date with scheduling changes, adjustments, and things like that. So uh, don't hesitate to do that. Now, to the topic at hand. Thought I'd try something a little different over here. Um, the Malayan Tapir is a bit of a swimmer, and the Malayan Tapir is... <laughs> it's got a very iconic shape, I would say. A very adorable and iconic shape. And I thought I would um, play around with those couple of elements. Plus, again, something we've been trying to do with all these enclosures is have a sort of massive body of water in a way to imply that island feeling, like each one is maybe an isolated island or something along those lines. But we, we've tried to, tried to like keep that going across the board for all of these enclosures, and that does not change here with the uh, Malayan Tapir either. Uh, except over here, I decided to go with a less, uh, maybe natural uh, kind of uh, form. I, I decided to make this very obviously, I guess, terraformed. Uh, so we actually have uh, sort of sculpted the ground to look a little bit like the head of a tapir. I, I think it's recognizable at least. In fact, afterwards we make a bit of an adjustment and uh, I think that makes it even more recognizable potentially. I mean, I hope I hope I'm not just seeing it because I know what it's supposed to be. I hope I hope you all can see it as well before I mention what it was supposed to be. Uh, but yeah, so made this large sort of pool, uh, if you will, and uh, and then sort of sculpted out the uh, um, the, the, the the shape of the. Uh, the, the tapir. I keep wanting to say Baird's tapir. It's so it's become such a habit to say Baird's tapir, uh, but it's not. It's a Malayan tapir. Uh, but yeah, so sculpted out the shape over there. Uh, made a nice big pool for it to swim in. I was hoping that most of its time would be spent, um, you know, guest side. Let's call it. I also added a bunch of trees. You must have noticed earlier, um, just to the little paths, little ramp paths uh, into the space over here. Thought it'd be nice to kind of fill out some of the space in between spaces, so to speak. Uh, and looking at how we can add a bit more sort of variety of greens to, uh, to this enclosure as well before we put down some of the bigger trees and, and start to really like densely uh, pack this space up. Again, these guys uh, live in a rainforest, so you know, densely packed vegetation uh, is sort of the name of the game and uh, trying to build like the canopied look and stuff like that. So we do pursue that as well. But it does kind of spread out a little bit to this walkway as well where I want, I want the whole path to kind of feel like a, a densely uh, forested uh, area, uh, you know, like you're going deep into an isolated space and whatnot, uh, putting a couple trees down in the enclosure as well. Nothing uh, overly, it, it's strange actually, this is perhaps the fastest time lapse that I have, uh, uh, that I've ever done in Planet Zoo at all, because I just kind of, I had a I had a game plan in my mind, I was fairly confident with how it was going to work out, as I've grown familiar with a lot of the systems, you know, over time, but also any of the uh, hiccups along the way, I was, uh, I don't know, they, they worked out. This, this, this was a very smooth experience, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, adding over here now as well, I figured 
Uh, the giant leaf insect is also native to Malaysia, so it'd be a nice kind of like not only way to cap off this mini series is having you know that that, that the insect put in as well, the uh, the exhibit rather is what I was looking for put in as well, but also they're both kind of tied to a or the not a but the same region that kind of worked out nicely. Um, but yeah, you can see that's the adjustment I made to this shape. We'll, we'll adjust it a bit more, but it kind of looks like the mouth underneath a little bit, you know, kind of, sort of, maybe-ish, a little. <laughs> Actually, I think we tweak it a little bit further as well, but, uh, but it gets there, it gets there. Um, and of course, gotta put, uh, the, the eating area near the mouth, right? Can't, uh, can't have it any other way. Gotta get the visual gags. There we go. There's a little adjustment there. I think, uh, again, it's a little cartoonish, but that's the intent, obviously, right? It's, it's supposed to look a little fake, uh, like a little, um man-made if you will right it's not naturally occurring um but yeah i mean this space kind of like worked out pretty well the one thing i did forget to do though i'll notice this shortly after the time lapse i forgot to put down the uh, barrier which might explain why everything went so quickly though this barrier did end up being fairly painless to place down you can see me kind of looking around being like oh what else do i i'm pretty i'm pretty happy with how this looks what else do i do i don't want to complicate it for the sake of complicating it so folks that's pretty much the time lapse we're gonna go back into regular speed watch the animals and uh Hopefully just have a wonderful time hanging out for this last time with a miniseries. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse. And I got to say that was probably one of our most efficient time lapses to date. And when I say to date, I don't mean just this miniseries. I mean, Planet Zoo as a whole. I had a plan in mind. Uh, I went kind of in with that plan in mind, and it evolved as we went on and as we started putting pieces down, and it, uh, yeah, actually rapidly came together. Very, very, very pleased with how that worked out. Very happy with how the space is looking as well. Again, tried something a little different from everything else. Tried something a bit more, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't necessarily want to say unnatural per se, uh, but certainly uh, very clearly, I guess, terraformed, as it were, uh, into a shape and whatnot, but uh, but also still uh, integrating into the rest of the zoo and, like, stuff we've, like, built uh, previously. What I might want to do is I might want to, like, kind of add some more... You know what? Actually, let's, let's, let's go ahead. This always kind of happens. It's always, like, I'm always pleased with something, and basically after a time lapse is done, especially with the uh, the miniseries, after the time lapse is done, I kind of, like, step away for a bit and then come back and, uh, like, step when I say step away for a bit, I mean, like, literally, like, five minutes maybe. You know, stretch my legs... Uh, just uh, refresh my eyes a little bit and then come back into it. And because I take that little moment aside, uh, inevitably when I come back in, I go, ah, there's some things that maybe I should tweak actually as I kind of look around the uh, the enclosure. But uh, just wanted to break up the color a little bit up over here. Anyway, um, either way, what I was <laughs> sort of getting at is, uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this. It's a, it's a very, again, different approach, different style from, from some of the other spots we've made with this uh, latest DLC at least. And I'm excited to see how the animal explores the space. There are some potential uh, problem points already. I mean, obviously there might be... Uh, there's some potential for escape. I don't know if they're able to climb this. Hopefully it's a little too narrow. Uh, but overall, I think we've done a decent job of securing the area. And uh, creating a very nice and kind of like densely... Like, I, I I like the view from over here. I think that's quite nice. I think the... Um, I think this is nice. I, 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 fuck. I'm like obsessed with these <laughs> ramp things now. This isn't the cleanest, perhaps. Uh, we could definitely flatten this a bit more, but this was more me just kind of like scratching that itch, basically, kind of just dealing with my obsession uh, with these sloped ramps and, and, and sloped. What kind of a ramp is not sloped? There's a there's a there's a statement. Um, but yeah, working with these ramps, it's just been <laughs> it's been a fun new discovery. So trying around with that, and of course, uh, we're not just adding. Uh, one animal today, but a little surprise, I guess. We are also adding in the uh, the leaf insect, and that I think will actually wrap up our uh, our our DLC showcase. I believe we've got all of the animals. Um, unless I'm horribly mistaken, I do believe that's all of them. I will check the uh, the comments after the fact if uh, if I've forgotten one. But if I have not forgotten one, I'd be you know what? Maybe maybe I should just do a quick double check over here. And yeah, seems as though I was right. We've got uh, we've got all the animals in. Well, after today's session, we'll have all the animals in. It's funny this this pack has been so densely packed that it's been it's been wild keeping a track of just how many animals have been added. At one point, I was just like, it feels like there's like <laughs> an infinite number of animals that were added with this DLC. But no, we have reached the uh, the end of the line today with these uh, two. Uh, new additions happening at the same time. Now, before we make those additions, of course, we're going to take a look at the Zoopedia entry. And I also want to make a quick mention of the fact that with this now sort of done, with this pack completed, and with this uh, mini-series completed, we will be returning to Elite Zoo South 
that is our for those of you that are unaware franchise mode playthrough and what i'm actually going to do for our first episode back which will be uh it'll release saturday at midnight so the same time as this miniseries has been happening and if you're familiar with the you know old schedule same same timing uh, however it'll be a little different than the usual for the uh, franchise let's play it'll be a live stream um our live oh, sorry our, our franchise zoo is uh a little backed up as far as the um, trade center is concerned. And I've been talking about doing a live session, a little trade session, and maybe we kind of just like kind of get back in the uh, in the right headspace, get back in the right sort of mindset going back into franchise mode. And I think all that would work great as a live stream. We get to hang out and I will be doing it at the same time as episodes release. So, you know, the scheduling stays the same as it always has. Uh, it will be a midnight uh, Eastern time release time or stream time, I guess, uh, on my end. But I know there's people all over the world that are watching at various times. It's always hard to pick a time for a live stream. So I figured why not stick with the, uh, the same time as we did our previous Planet Zoo live stream and also the same time as the episodes would release anyway. Anyway, I just had to make that announcement. I figured I should let everybody know that that is the plan moving forward. That would be, again, Saturday. Technically, Saturday, midnight, EST live streaming follow me on twitter i will be posting updates over there as well and i will probably make a community post as well on the day of but following me on twitter is probably the best uh best way to kind of stay up to date with that link is in the description down below but i digress let's stay focused over here the first animal we're going to look at today as far as the zoopedia entry is concerned is the malayan tapir uh, i am just enamored by how this animal looks. The adult, the baby, they all look absolutely adorable. Um, so I'm very excited to finally get them in and, and look at them and hopefully they'll be able to reproduce and we'll see some baby tapir. But part of the reason why I was okay with leaving the Malayan tapir to the end is because if I'm not mistaken, the Malayan tapir baby looks fairly similar to the uh, you know Baird's tapir baby. And so we, you know, at least we've like, we've, we've seen tapir babies before. Some of the other animals we haven't, um, though I guess arguably all puppers kind of look a little similar, but I'm sure you guys understand my my bias there. But anyway, hopefully we'll see some baby um, Malayan tapirs. If not, well, that would be unfortunate, but not the end of the world, as they say. Now, the Malayan tapir, Tapirus indicus. Ah. Interesting. Okay. Um, endangered, perhaps unsurprisingly. Population of wild is 3,000. The Malayan tapir is a mammal native to the rainforests of Southeast Asia. The Malayan tapir's head, shoulders, front legs, and back legs are black, and their mid-body and back end is white. It is a heavyset animal and has a distinctive prehensile proboscis. Proboscis, no, sorry. Uh, the reason why, okay, so <laughs> it was pointed out to me that I, I keep saying proboscis, proboscis wrong, um, and it's because uh, they're was i guess past time there you there the out there there was a personality who had an alias that sounded very similar to proboscis pro proboscis but it was pronounced more like proboscis um and so it's like it always throws me off when this word comes up now uh so yes prehensile proboscis nose my apologies for the mispronunciation but yes thank you for catching me out on that and calling me out on that and and and, and correcting me on that i always look for corrections uh I, I i appreciate it it was just like oh yeah i never i i like never realize uh or i rarely realize how often i, I get that wrong um you know I, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's got multiple pronunciations but but chances are um I'm the only one who pronounces it the way I pronounce it. Uh, Malayan tapirs measure between 5.94 feet and 8.25 feet in length and weigh between 550 pounds and 1,188 pounds. These numbers, again, they, they mean like next to nothing to me. They're they're heavy uh, on the heavier side, I guess, compared to some of the other animals. Like, I, I, don't, I don't do pounds, I do kilograms. So um, I'll like convert these afterwards, but like they're heavier than any of the other animals we've put in, if I'm not mistaken as far as this DLC is concerned. Females tend to be slightly larger than males and 10% to 20% heavier. What? Why not just, is this, this is the first time they've, they've done this, right? I'm not, <laughs> it's like somebody, it's like somebody else wrote this one. Um, I mean, yeah, sure, I can do the math. 10 and 20% are not difficult numbers to calculate, but like, 
normally we're used to seeing the numbers actually get shown so we can see anyway malayan tapirs are endangered the main threat towards this species is habitat loss through deforestation the conversion of land for agricultural use they are a protected species in malaysia and indonesia um okay i'm gonna check the fun facts before i spew out one of my own with regards to um the regions that they're kind of like spoken of in let's put it that way uh natural habitat yes as you can see very very like kind of i guess pocketed i wonder if they have similar I didn't mention that the fragmentation of their habitat is a problem but I, I imagine it is i imagine it probably is um wouldn't be surprised and as we can see they are uh, aquatic as well as tropical and temperate really went for that tropical kind of vibe with these guys for the uh, enclosure i just kind of it looks looks good i like i like the tropical vibe for this entire uh, like corner of the uh of our uh, showcase zoo as it were they don't need a lot of space so i'm almost certain we've given them more than enough they do need room to swim so we've kept that in mind we've given them a fair bit of room to swim i i'm fairly certain we've given them enough room to swim yeah we we must have i'm 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 underestimating the size of our uh of our of our pool as it were they don't need deep water though so we're you know fine on that front even though we did provide that they'll be swimming around for a fair bit of time uh and yes i'm sure we have enough space temperatures should be okay we might need to put a heater down we'll see we might need to heat the water actually just like we did for the um the monkeys so we might need to do that over here but uh my biggest concern is actually them being able to jump out from the water i don't think so i mean the game sometimes does some funky stuff with animals jumping out of and into the water but hopefully we're fine over here species data all right Group size, excluding juveniles, one to two. So similar to the Baird's Tapir, if I recall correctly, right? Male bachelor group size is one. Female is also one, so they are very solitary, I assume. No dominant system. Uh, monogamous. Neutral relation with humans. And guests cannot enter the habitat. I would love to one day pet a tapir. They just seem so, like, just cute. I like to hug a tapir, not just pet. I like to... Yeah, they feel... They look very... Don't they look very, like... I don't know. They look very huggable. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Um, size, 38 inches tall at the shoulder, 42 inches tall at the shoulder for females. Um, okay, 30-year life expectancy across the board. And the weight on average for males is 759 pounds, and for females is 891 pounds. Fair enough. Sexual maturity at three years, death at... Or sterility at death, death at sterility. Could you imagine it worked like that the other way around? <laughs> uh, sterility is at death, sorry. One offspring per mating event, 13-month gestation period, 24-month interbirth period and reproduction captivity is actually easy well hang on a second let me just check here real quick because i'm curious the beard's tape here also very easy all right okay cool cool cool. i i was a little worried that they would be uh difficult to uh breed but i i suppose not no baby shot for this one eh just the just the same pictures that's that's too bad um but yeah easy that's good not very easy but easy good social needs malayan tapirs are often solitary but may also be found in monogamous pairs with their young offspring or in temporary feeding groups they are tolerant of other individuals. Well, that sounds familiar. Reproduction. When a tapir female moves through a tapir male's territory, he will track her by the scent of her urine. When a tapir male moves through... Okay. When they meet, the male will court the female by nudging and sniffing her hindquarters and chasing her. If the female is receptive, she will allow him to mount her and mate. They will mate several times throughout the day while the female is fertile. After mating, the male and female may stay together or go their separate ways. After a pregnancy of 390 to 410 days, okay, the female will give birth to a single calf. For the first few weeks of the calf's life, it remains hidden in the undergrowth, and the mother will return often to feed it. The last session, I was kind of talking about how it would be cool to see some of this, like, these, like, childhood or child-rearing or, uh, like, uh, uh, parental instincts and stuff and, and parental um, relationships play out in game I would love to see this kind of stuff you know uh, I would love to see like the, uh, the the mother start behaving very differently um, when it's given birth actually I feel like that would be interesting from a management perspective as well right because guests I think about it right guests don't understand animals needs and wants sometimes like sometimes uh, uh, again some guests do this is not a blanket statement some guests don't though some guests don't know uh, why an animal might be more reclusive or, or, you know, maybe the bears are hibernating or maybe the, you know, like, and this would kind of, it would make an interesting, it would add an interesting layer to the management aspect of things and it would also give us more insight into like just the animals and it would be more interesting to look at the animals behave a little differently from time to time. Anyway, I digress yet again. At a week old, the calf would, will accompany its mother during foraging. 
calves remain with their mother until they're about one to two years old, depending on when their mother has another calf. All right, fair enough. Uh, moving on to the research status. Of course, we have everything unlocked, I believe. Ooh, hello. Well, that's new. Don't mind if I do. Uh, habitat. I didn't... Oh, yeah, there we go. Cool. Let's go ahead and put this down. Trying to grow a little tired of using the same... Um, same enrichment items everywhere, so this is a, a nice kind of change of pace. Sure, why not? Let's do that. Fun times. Excellent times. Back to Zupedia over here. They have a couple of uh, elements from the new DLC that we've already seen around elsewhere as well. And then the food enrichment is all the same as before, as we've seen before, rather, I should say. Uh, all right, fun fact number one, the Malayan tapir is the largest species of tapir. Ooh, okay. Fun fact number two, infant tapirs have dark fur with a pattern of white spots and stripes that camouflages them in the undergrowth. Oh, and dappled light of the rainforest. Oh, oh good. My brain stopped there for a second. Cool. So yeah, they are they're 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 young look the same. And I do find it very interesting from just a evolutionary perspective, I suppose, uh, how their how their fur changes um, based on the you know the undergrowth versus having to kind of roam, I guess. Fun fact number three, Malayan tapers will often walk along riverbed Oh underwater for up to 90 seconds. Alright, that I that is a yeah, that's a surprise. I'm not sure if that will uh, show up in the game. I imagine it will. Let me actually check something over here real quick. Bear with me here. Ba bared with me here. All right, cool. I was wondering about the uh, about fun fact number two, if it would be uh, if it was the same as the Baird's tapir. And number four, the Malayan tapir is the only species of tapir that is native to Asia with all other species living in Central and South America. Yeah, but isn't it wild that so far apart that they're so far apart they are native to uh, to like both of these spaces, right? The Malayan tapir's vision is very poor, and they rely mainly on scent and hearing to navigate their surroundings. Uh, pretty good, pretty good fun facts. Uh, what I was gonna, I, I didn't expect this to be included in here because it's not uh, sort of on brand for Zoopedia, I guess. Uh, but if memory serves me right, and, uh, you know, like verify this, you check this, uh, look it up, but I'm fairly sure this is, I, I remember this correctly, but the uh, Malayan tapir in Japanese folklore, and maybe also in some Chinese folklore, not 100% sure about the latter especially, uh, but it is, um, at least in, in, in Japanese, its name shares the same uh, word as the name of a, um, of a sort of like a spirit creature, I guess, that, uh, that, is, that, that eats nightmares. Maybe it's dreams as well, but I think it's specifically nightmares. Uh, and for the life of me, the word is escaping me right now. Uh, but it's pretty cool. If you look up, uh, if you look up Malayan tapir, uh, you know, Japanese mythology or Japanese folklore, you'll you'll find uh, you'll find some conversation about uh, about the uh, the Malayan tapir and uh, well, well, I assume it's the Malayan tapir because uh, again, it's like the shared word at least in in Japanese. But uh, and if you look at the illustrations as well, you can kind of see the similarities. Um, like the, I mean, the, you know, traditional style illustrations, but, um, I thought that was interesting. I was kind of tempted to like tap into that for today's enclosure. And then I was like, nah, it's a little unfair, I guess. Cause, uh, we're in Southeast Asia. Let's try and stay, you know, in, 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 in Southeast Asia. Uh, and let's, uh, let's wait for the, for the hopefully inevitable Japan DLC before we do more, uh, more Japan inspired stuff. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd mention that. Cause I thought it was quite interesting. I, I like, uh, I like the idea of, um, I've always been fascinated by dreams um, and how we in either interpret them or interact with them or um, try to hold control over them, if you will. I'm talking about a variety of like dream related um, activities across cultures, you know, not just not just historically, but present day as well. Right. I, I find that stuff really interesting. And uh, before we actually get the Malayan tapir in, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the giant Malaysian leaf insect. If you're wondering why these guys are uh, paired together, it's because of the uh, the overlap. These things are fascinating. Um, remember learning about them when I was fairly young, and uh, my mind was absolutely blown. I imagine I imagine this is what got me so fascinated by just like evolutionary traits, like defensive evolutionary traits and whatnot. I forget the term for it, but you, you can see what I'm talking about, right? Like this is just visually, just not just striking, but fascinating, just absolutely amazing. 
Uh, the giant Malaysian leaf insect. Uh, Phylium uh, giganteum. I'm assuming. Population on wild, in, in wild is unknown. Yeah, of course. You never know if you're looking at a leaf or if you're looking at a leaf insect, right? Um, <laughs> imagine trying to keep... Uh, trying to keep count. Uh, the giant Malaysian leaf insect is a large species of insect that lives in the western tropical rainforests of Malaysia. The species exhibits extraordinary camouflage. As its name suggests, it has evolved to blend in with the leaves of the trees in which it lives. Females are 4.8 inches in length, broad and flat in appearance, and have small vestigial wings that do not allow them to fly. Males are approximately 3.6 inches in length and much more slender. They have long wings and can fly. No, oh, interesting. Uh, didn't didn't know that about the uh, the males that they were actually able to fly. Uh, I was just I was chuckling while I was reading that because I was like, can you imagine um, this image rather than having this like zoomed in focused shot of one of the insects was just like like just a tree, <laughs> and it's like yeah they're in there somewhere. It's just, they're in there somewhere. Obviously it wouldn't work for. Uh, it'd be a great like April Fool's joke would be to, like swap all the images out or something. Way too much effort for uh, <laughs> for for one day, but uh, yeah. Um, back on topic over here, regions West Malaysia. Um, we've got the tropical biome, so again, they kind of fit the space. We'll have to, uh, again, I, I think the default settings will be fine, but you always have to kind of go in and click to make sure it actually sets them. Species data. Group size is 1 to 8, no dominance. Mating system is promiscuous or parthenogenic. I did not know that. That is asexual reproduction of females. Teach me more game. Hold on. Does that work in the... Ooh. Does that work in the game? Or in captivity, do they behave differently? Huh. Curious. Size, 3.6 inches long for males, 4.8 for females. Life expectancy is 1.5 years across the board. Weight is unknown. Yeah. How do you how do you measure the weight of something like this? Um, sexual... I mean, uh, I know the answer to that question, but I'm just like, I can imagine the, the difficulty of, uh, of of trying to collect like a an average trying to collect the, the sample size and get a good average that you can actually like track as they've tracked all the other animals you know uh age of sexual maturity is at eight months sterility is at death number of offspring per mating event is two to seven zero month gestation and incubation period 120 month interbirth period and easy reproduction in captivity fair enough social needs these insects are solitary but very passive so can be kept together huh they should not be kept with other large herbivores insects because they could be eaten due to their lack of movement and leaf-like appearance. That is... <laughs> yeah, yikes. Reproduction. Females are fully grown at 7 months and reach sexual maturity at 8 months old. Sorry, I'm still, I'm still kind of like imagining a situation where, where like you think you're safe because of your camouflage. And it's like, oh wait, hold on a second. I look like food to this other thing though. Oh, okay, sorry. Females are fully grown at 7 months and reach sexual maturity at 8 months old. Females are parthenogenic, meaning they can lay viable eggs without needing to mate. The female will lay approximately 40 eggs at a rate of 1 to 2 per day. Mating habits of the species are little known because the males have been so rarely observed, so some gaps in knowledge here have been filled in by looking at other species in the uh, Philium genus. Fair enough. I'm glad that they noted that. I'm, I, I like that they noted that. Uh, males will search for females when in flight. When a receptive female is found, he will land and mate with her. Fertilized eggs are laid in the same way as unfertilized eggs at a rate of one to two, uh, at, at a rate of, at a rate of 40, sorry, at a rate of one to two per day. Okay, gotcha. There's a per missing there. Uh, and buried in the ground. Eggs will hatch six to nine months after being laid. Male young will go through six molts. Females will go through seven. They will have approximately one molt per month until they are fully grown. 1.5 years, eh? Huh, interesting. It's a, it's, a, it's a fascinating creature, and I'm enjoying learning more about it like this. Um, research status, let's take a look over here. Uh, this is all kind of familiar territory, but fun fact number one. The giant Malaysian leaf insect is very docile and spends most of its time still and unreactive, which further improves its camouflage. The giant Malaysian leaf insect lives in the Taman Negara rainforest, which is 130 million years old. And one of the oldest rainforests in the world. 130 million years old. Wild. Wild. Fun fact number three. While molting, the giant Malaysian leaf insect is very vulnerable and can easily die if the temperature or humidity of the environment are not ideal. Ah. Or if they are touched while their bodies are still soft. This can make raising them in captivity difficult. Very interesting. 
Ah, huh, very interesting indeed. Fun fact number four. Females do not require males to reproduce and can breed asexually, but all the offspring will be female in this case. That makes sense. I was, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. But it's, you know, it, but it's a, it's an endless cycle. It doesn't matter if it's a, a, a batch or a, a litter. Do you call it a litter when it's insects? I don't think so, right? It doesn't matter if it's a, a set of all females, because if they also um, asexually reproduce, you'll, you, the, the species goes on, the species continues. Um, I wonder though, something that's actually, something that's throwing me off is the phrase breed. I guess breeding does not require a pair. It's just like, that's what, because like, I would like, if, if I were to write this, for example, uh, I would say, um, and reproduce asexually. Because breeding, I am like 90 90% sure that breeding, at least among animals, involves a pair, at the very least. I mean, I don't, I don't know about other circumstances. Um, so to suggest breeding asexually, I don't know. Yeah, I could be wrong. Maybe this is a way to use uh, use the the term. I've always heard it as uh, uh, asexual reproduction or reproduce asexually, but not uh, not uh, not breed. Anyway, correct me if I'm wrong. Obviously, in the in the comments, but I will I will check this out. I was fairly certain that breed always requires a, a pair, but maybe that's like a colloquialism. Maybe scientifically it's used more uh, broadly, more 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 breedly, if you will. But anyway, that is interesting. The first half of that, I was a little disappointed. I was like, I've already read this three times in this uh, in this Zoopedia entry. But then that second half, all right, cool, it makes sense. But it's still like, oh, cool. Fun fact number five, the first male giant Malaysian leaf insect was not discovered until 1994. Therefore, comparatively little is known about the males of the species. 1994. I need to, I need a second to process that. That is wild. That is wild. I kind of wish they included when the first female was, uh, was discovered just so we could have a, a point of reference, like a comparison point, right? Oh, that's, well, that's wild. Oh, that's crazy. All right, cool. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get some of these uh, boys and girls in, shall we? Let's first begin, why not, with the exhibit trading, because we can kind of like drop them in right away. Um, what am I looking for here? I am looking for the giant Malaysian leaf insect. Go ahead and scoop up Wibawa over here. That is our male, and our female will be Alia. Then let's get Alia in put a little spot over here yeah i like that i was hoping it would fit in quite nicely it does i wish the tree didn't stop i mean i could i i was like toying around with this idea a little bit but i wasn't sure if it would work or not could it's not the same tree right so it's not gonna like work perfectly Nah, it doesn't work well enough, I don't think. It'd be nice, though, because then you'd have the tree actually continue on upwards and whatnot. It would just be cut off from access. Anyway, uh, so that's that done. And while we're uh, waiting for the uh, tapirs to come through, we will sort of observe them, spend some time with them. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the Malaysian... Where are you? Malayan tapir, sorry. Malaysian tapir. <laughs> the Malayan tapir. Malayan? Malayan? Malayan, I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, Pramana, let's go ahead and adopt you. And Puspita, let's go ahead and adopt you as well. The only ones with, uh, with ranks, so go ahead and put you up. And, oh no, I just realized something, uh, that didn't occur to me earlier is I did not put down a barrier. Wow, uh, I didn't actually build out the, uh, outer extent of their enclosure. Not the end of the world, because it is a relatively simpler one than, than most we will be fine over here <laughs> just gotta quickly make this i i knew something was up i knew I, I knew something was uh was wrong there with how uh how painlessly it all came together and it's like right we need, we need these all right cool question becomes oh you know what here's what we'll do here's what we'll do this just makes sense why don't we go ahead and uh and have like an, a, a a door on the opposite side here but move you in of course, not panel too long, you're saying. There we go. Move you in as well. Now, hopefully. Hopefully, it'll let, it'll, it'll let me do this. Go ahead and push back over here. 
This is uh, an unexpected turn of events. There we go. Move this out. There go. I think this will be enough room. They're, they're, they're larger than other bear's tapers, but a little small animal. I think this will work out. Back to our barrier, sorry. Go ahead and nudge you a little bit further back. I'm hoping that gives us enough room to... Oh, come on now, game. You know exactly what I need here. Alright. Every time. Oh, let's hit escape. Go ahead and that instead. Maybe that's enough room here. Oh, what if I get rid of you? Try to pop you down instead. There we go. Over to the null. Connect you there and connect you there. Done. Can they escape from here? Probably. Pop this down. Pop this down. Go all the way up top. Could have actually selected. It's okay because it all kind of like clips off in the distance so the height doesn't really matter. And that is that. Cool. Wonderful. That should be okay. I just hope they don't spend too much of their time hiding in this little cubby area. You know, I hope they actually come out. Anyway, <laughs> that was an unexpected turn of events. So let's go ahead and send these guys into the habitat. Go ahead and unpause and see how that works out. Meanwhile, down over here. Spend some time with these guys. Oh, you know what I just realized? Uh, no, 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 no. Nope, 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 nope. Zoo, animals. Over to my Malayan tape here. You too. I can't stop, eh? That's unfortunate. I realize I need to I need to get them into quarantine first. Definitely thrown off by uh <laughs> by having to put the barrier down. It's okay though. I mean again, it's a sandbox. It's not the end of the world, I suppose, but one thing I do like to try and concern myself with at least. Go ahead and put down a power generator and perhaps even... Yeah, we need water cleaning and we need power as well. We've got room in here. I would like to push this back a little bit. We should be able to tuck it here without bothering the, uh, the guests. Animals don't mind because animals understand that zoos need uh, maintenance. Guests, though. Guests refuse to understand that. Back a bit more. Yeah, we got we got a lot of room over here. As I say that, of course, we reach our limit. All right, good. Gotta nudge you back up there. All right, let's go ahead and get the facilities. Get ourselves power. Nope, it's not called power. It's called transformer. Pop you down over here. Let's also go ahead and get the water facility. Cool. And that should, I think, cover us, right? Water is good, and power is good as well. Yeah. Cool. These guys are not doing too well. That's because they had no power, and now that they do have power, we still need to adjust these guys. There we go. They're actually not in the default, so good thing I came through. All right, where are you guys? See how quickly we can spot them. I know there's somewhere in here. I know because we put them in here. Wait, one, one more thing I actually want to do before we <laughs> begin this hunt is uh, why don't we add some... Uh, there we go. Some fun stuff for these guys to, to actually hang out in and with. Well, imagine they'd be all the way down here, right? I would like to see one. Oh. That's, that's just a leaf. <laughs> I imagine it's so much more obvious than uh, than I think it is. And, uh, and that's why I won't see them. Because I'll be looking for something... Um, a lot more hidden than I need to. You know what I mean? Oh. I think that's... Could it... No. 
<laughs> but yeah, what I, what I mean is like, I'm looking at the leaves expecting one to be the animal, whereas maybe the animal itself is like staring me in the face right now and I'm just like completely oblivious to it, blind to it. Also just a leaf. The ones that are like a little brighter, they stand out to me and I always go like, oh, what's that? Imagine some of you yelling at the screen right now, party, it's right there. <laughs> Stop moving the camera. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that. Look at the level of detail on this little thing. I, I, I got nothing but kudos for the developers, for the artists, for the programmers, for, for, for the whole, the, just, the, just everybody, for going, no, these guys deserve as much love as the, uh, as the larger animals. Yeah, look at the level of detail. Look at the, like, look, I wish I could zoom in even closer without the, like, ah. That. Look at how crisp the texture is. Fascinating. Cool, all right, cool. I'm glad we, I'm glad we saw one. I do wonder, though, if the uh, asexual reproduction is represented in the game. That'd be interesting. All right, I think our tapirs are here now as well. Yes, they are. Let's uh, make sure they're not able to get away. Enrichment they're not happy enough with. No food enrichment. I... What? Oh. Right, that's what I get. I deserve this. Wondering about that. All right. Now that we're looking at uh, just what we need here. Sure. Pop you down over here. Why not? Does that do the trick? Seems it does. Brain they're more than happy with. Uh, a little bit of... Too little short grass, too little soil. All right, I had a feeling they needed more soil, just based on like what I know about the uh, the animal. Add more soil. There you go. And let's go ahead and add some short grass up over here. Get rid of some of this tall grass. Come on. I want to make sure I don't get rid of the, the rock. Just a little more grass. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Happy across the board. That looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, go with the animals. Let's take a look actually real quick over here. I just want to make sure they're not able to escape, right? Yeah, it seems like they are... Locked in. Great. They can get into the water in a few spots, but I'm really hoping they will show preferential treatment for this space over here because, you know, that way the guests will be able to see it should they ever come here. My hope as well is that guests will actually come through uh, this entire, sorry, this entire experience to see these animals from up over here because this is the only spot you can see these guys. They're pretty secluded. They're pretty, uh, you know, off in the corner over here. But I do hope to see uh, see guests come up over here. I'd come up over here. I'd I'd chill over here. Are oh, you playing with the tire? That's not playing anymore. Now you're just walking through it. I don't think he was playing with it in the first place. Of course. <laughs> I was just about to say, look at how like godlike it looks with the halo and everything. <laughs> oh, that's cute though. A little uh, roar or whatever you want to call it. I just love the shape of their heads and little ear wiggles. I can never. You are you're you're a cutie. You know that, right? Of course you know that. Look at that strut. That's the strut of somebody who knows they're a cutie. So adorable. What about you? You're cute too. Aw, look at that. So bashful, looking away. <laughs> Still looking away. That's actually <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right, cool. I'm glad they, uh, they like instantly like the space. You know, one thing I want to check as well. Hmm, they are able to hop onto these. Cool. I was hoping they'd be able to traverse these at least a little bit. Uh, if not walk, then hop. And it seems like that worked out. Just the nose wiggle as well. That run too. 
barely keep up. They seem pleased with the space. Oh, also these like naturally occurring stripes I decided to keep in there. Normally I'd clean up the the patchy kind of like groundwork, but how, how can I how can I not when the game itself is like alluding to their young? How can I not? Look at that fur, man. Just look at uh, just the level of detail. It's just I've been playing this game for how long now? Over a year and a half? More than? Still blown away by the visual. Like fidelity. Oh, I'm losing my mind over here. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you thinking? What are you up to? I love the sounds they make too. Same to same same as the uh the Baird's tape here, right? Eh? Very light tire. <laughs> you up to over here. Apart from being selected. Ah, chillin'. He looks a bit grumpier. This is an example, I was talking last session about bones versus soft body simulations. This is an example where you probably use the bone because you have to animate it very specifically. As opposed to it just jiggling, you know, with every uh, with every step or what have you. Question is, will we get a baby? That's the question. I haven't seen the mate yet. So I did this primarily for them to like drink from, but it looks like they, they could just swim on that, swim in that as well. This is for swimming. This massive pool is for swimming. I quite like how the uh, Everglades. Ooh, what's. How oh, interesting. Huh. Interesting. You see that reflection over there of that tree that's sideways? There's obviously no sideways tree up top. You go underwater, it's no longer here. That is the reflection map, I think, of the uh, of the water. I think, or like preset um, sky that it's told to use as a as a base for reflections because it is reflecting what's actually in the space as well, quite nicely as well. But that, unless I'm unless I'm misreading it from a technical perspective, I didn't realize they were doing that, and it's just interesting to see. Also tripping me up. Because there's definitely not a tree down here. Or up over here. And yet. Alright. Well, that's enough. Enough of that. Enough of that. Did I give you enough private sign? Were they distracted by long enough? Oh. Come on. Come on. Yes. 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 I was gonna say, like, touch noses or whatever you do. Alright, alright, and... Yes! June of next year, not too long away. It's that lie-down animation is great as well. Oh, that's interesting. The leg positioning is very interesting. Ah, no, okay, okay, I see, I see. It's just like a, it's like a side saddle, I guess, on the on the ground. I thought what was going on was the, uh, the hind leg on the far side here was straight out. And and this was down here. That's like one of those weird perspective. Look at the eye. I don't know what that was, but I loved it. It was like adjusting the ground it was sleeping on or something. Probably fine on falling asleep is my assumption, but... Oh, or not. Or the exact opposite. Interesting sitting animation. That's, that's something I, uh... 
There it is. I was like, where the tire go? I just launched it. Uh, it's something I always find a little, uh, uh, it can be interesting as well, is like how animals like sit and stand. Um, oh, sun bears are having some trouble over here. The, uh, Hold on, are you pregnant with... That ain't right. Remember, well, let's go ahead and put you in the Trade Center. It's uh, me having missed uh, an inbreeding notification there. <laughs> Whoops. Um, right, yeah, animals sitting and standing and, 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 and whatnot, I find, uh, can be very interesting. I think back about, like, when I... Uh, I got to ride camels in the Sahara. That was a fun time. Um, getting, getting, <laughs> when it, when a camel stands up or sits down, it is a, uh, very interesting experience. Um, it's very unique. Uh, and, and you only mount a camel when it's sitting down. I say sitting down, I mean like lying down or on, like, at ground level. I don't know what the right terminology would be, I suppose. Uh, but basically a camel kind of gets down onto the ground um, you know, folds its legs, you can climb onto its back, and then it stands up. And the way it, like, stands up or or sits down is just, you know, the uh, the, the movement is either forward or backward, basically. But uh, it, uh, if it's standing and it's going gonna, it's gonna to sit down, first it folds its front legs. So you as the rider, if you're the rider, you, like, tip forward and and watch the, your angle go down like this. And then they fold their back legs, so you tip back and you watch your, your angle go like this, and then they flatten out. And it's just like a roller coaster ride of you like like that. Whoops. I get the camera to, to do it like I can't even. Like tip forward and then you tip backwards and you're finally level. And you're just like, oh my god, I almost died there twice. <laughs> it's terrifying the first time, uh first time, but uh then you get used to it. You know, you know what to expect. Yeah, that is a camel, for example, you know, getting up and down. Or like watching dogs uh, pat down the uh, the terrain before they lie down, right? Like they they like all almost universally, unless I'm mistaken, they they will pat down the terrain, flatten the, the ground upon which they will lie down, and then they lie down. Um, and, uh, and that's interesting. Um, we've seen... What else? I'm trying to think of like other animals that come to mind that are interesting to watch when they are... Uh, changing stance as it were but just a couple of examples the bear the, the the sorry not the bear but the the malayan tapir is another example of like well that's interesting hey buddy moved leaves eh is that to leave your first one really hope i can get closer with this camera like with this angle that's pretty close Fascinating. It's beautiful too. Where is the is that the female or the male? I'm curious. Oh my god, we've already had offspring. There's a lot of males, so much for them being uh not so common. Oh my god, look at that. Hey, you're doing your camouflage wrong. This is a dead log shouldn't be on here not so vibrant at least look at some of the dead leaves around you like that's the color you should be probably i do wonder about that though so it's like what happens when like fall comes and all the leaves are changing color it's like it feels like a comedy sketch it's like well yeah what happens do they change their color or do they only live in like evergreen literally evergreen uh um like areas i guess i guess yeah, I mean, I guess so, right? I wonder, I don't know if they, they gotta move, right? Don't think I have the patience for it. Because, <laughs> like, we've seen some exhibit animals that, yeah, will physically move around their, their enclosure, so I imagine these guys do as well. I'm just curious how they move around.
like look away, look back, and then one of them's gone or something. We're good. All right, what are we looking at? June of year 19, right? Still some time. We'll have our baby soon enough. Partner. Me alone? Where are they, actually? Oh, there they are. Trying to get to the food. I guess they don't show them walking. Uh, I mean, maybe if this was shallower, they would walk. Right, because... Um, it's on, it's on, it's on the bottom of rivers that they walk, so maybe it's like shallow rivers, not, uh, not such deep pits. Alright. Pretty pleased with how this space is working out. Again, they, they love it, so can't complain about that. How are other animals doing? Talk about timing here. I thought I was like, am I on the inside already? Yes, I am. Go ahead and get nails. Trade center. What else do we have over here? Museum repair. Do we, do we even have mechanics actually in the zoo? We might not. We have one. <laughs> A poor mechanic. Oh hey, it was actually running over here to get the to get the job done. Fascinating. You know, I, I'm really quite pleased with our our enclosures in this uh, in this mini series. We've come up with some cool stuff. We've come up with some really cool stuff. Thinking back on this is wild as well. Feels like it was so long ago. I love doing this. massive staircase that like monumental look almost I really like this enclosure With the waterfall and stuff as well and it's great I'm, I'm very pleased with this and on the other side as well like this is that's great I love it and we've got this like epic waterfall and ramp that you go down right look at that Look at that. A little retrospective here for you. Over here you can take a peek at the uh, proboscis monkey. Proboscis. <laughs> Difficult for me to build that habit. Or you can keep going up this way. Pass some of these bushes. Up this ramp. Swervy ramp of ours. And up top over here. One side you got the dole. There we go. Guys. Ah, look at that. Look at that mountain. Very pleased with how this turned out as well. We even managed to capture one at the top. That, that made me so happy. And over here, of course, we have the uh, leopards. As, I don't mind this clipping. It's almost like they're sitting on these steps and turning around to look back. Back at these moonwalking cats. Hey, buddy. Please with this as well. Again, not too overly complex. One centerpiece, a little decorative trees and stuff around it. I like the uh, overall shape of the water. Yeah, yeah, I'm pleased with this. I, I'm really happy with all these enclosures. I want to try and channel some of this to the uh, Let's Play as well. With the uh, franchise mode Let's Play, I find I often... I don't know I don't know what ends up happening, but I end up taking... Uh, we, we talked about this after the previous DLC came out as well, but, we, but I end up taking a few sessions to make one enclosure, whereas over here, it's just like... Sit down and get one done per per sitting. I want to bring that kind of pace to that franchise mode let's play as well. I think a big part of it is uh, with the uh, with the DLC showcase. I, ha I I don't necessarily have to care for. Oh yeah, I got to put down a staff room and stuff as well. I got to make sure the guests are like I don't have to think about that kind of stuff. And that also means there's less. Um, non-enclosure stuff that I have to just worry about in general from decoration to, to functionality. Maybe that's a part of it or something. It's something though, but uh, I don't mind taking longer to complete an enclosure. Sometimes they require that much extra like time uh, being dedicated to them. Sometimes we do extremely complicated stuff 
Uh, but at other times, it's just kind of like something that should take one session. I guess I uh, I let it take too many because I some I, I think I'm always uh, uh I think I'm always like trying to find a way to overcomplicate my life <laughs> for lack of a better word. Well, what are we looking at here? January, a few more months left. Almost, almost. Waiting, waiting for this baby to come. Now watch, once the month actually comes through, it'll just be like walking around for a little bit, not doing anything. But yeah, I'm uh, really quite pleased with this uh, corner of our zoo. Call it a corner, but it's more than half of our zoo. I think this, I mean, the size of this DLC is so much bigger as well, right? The aquatic DLC had fewer animals and whatnot. Still a great DLC. It also had uh, construction, you know, parts and things like that significantly more. Um, but... Uh, I quite like these spaces as well. I quite like these spaces too. Um, I, I I like how this turned out too. Look at that. That, that, that is probably one of my fa like favorite waterfalls as well. So simple. Having the uh, the rocks pierce through. Works wonderfully. Such a crowded space over here. I did not realize this animal would be so, so popular. These little guys in here as well. Again, this is not the... Southeast Asia DLC, folks, this is a reminder. This is the Aquatic DLC. If you'd like to pick that up, you can do that at the uh, link in the description as well, by the way. All the Planet Zoo DLC and the Planet Zoo itself as well, if you'd like to pick up, uh, you can do it at the link in the description down below. It does support the channel. Um, it doesn't cost anything like extra for you or anything like that. Uh, you get the DLC or the game or what have you as a Steam key. So uh, you, know, you end up playing it on Steam. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you support the channel at the same time. Uh, but again, this the, this stuff is the aquatic DLC, not the uh, Southeast Asia DLC. Just 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 to, just to clarify, um, didn't want to mislead anybody by mistake. My apologies if I did. Uh, but over here we got the penguins. <laughs> how amazing is that? Yeah, I actually quite like that we came back to this zoo, because now we can see how uh, how massive this uh, this group is. Look at that. This is wild. Oh man. And then we can come up over here. Look at these guys. Deals. Or look at these guys. Giant otters. That were much more giant than I was expecting. This came as a surprise for sure. Uh, a lot of adjusting and tweaking this enclosure. But it ended up working out well enough. It ended up working out quite well, actually. I quite like the... Uh, this, like... Like, tiered approach or whatever you want to call it. Like, we have this, like swimming space over here that they spend a lot of time in and then when they want to get out of here they go take these steps down we've got this waterfall to the side over here as well a little river for them to swim in too i actually really like this enclosure i really like this zoo <laughs> we've done we've done well in this zoo we've done well in the zoo all right back to you march still some time left to go Animals with low welfare, I assume, is it stress again? It is, isn't it? I assume it's because there's so many guests. Damn it. Didn't catch it in time. But yeah, I assume there's so many guests near the, uh, the seal that they're just not, uh, not too pleased about that. Should be swimming in this? I mean, I, I I knew they were going to. I even mentioned it earlier. It's like no, I I intentionally, intentionally made another space for you, significantly larger. This is like that's the Olympic swimming pool. This is the hot tub, I guess. I understand wanting to use the hot tub from time to time, but if you want to swim. This is for for staying sedentary, for staying absolutely stationary. If you want to swim make this massive pool for no reason. I'm lazy over here. Taking a nap over here. Just so peaceful. Nice to spend some time with the animals. What about these uh, leaves of ours? You guys still huddled on the uh, the log over here? 
No, they've they've decided to heed my advice. Left. Where are you now? Now that I know better what I'm looking for, I think it should be a bit easier to spot. There we go. Definitely helps when you know what it looks like in game. Oh yeah, a bunch of them down here. Okay, listen, that's just a bad. You're just doing a bad job, buddy. Doing a bad job staying alive. Let me find the most non-green thing in here. It's a little baby, I imagine. Because it's not the right month. April, May, June. Soon, soon. I want to spend some time with some of these other animals then. My go-to. God, they're great. Still, their, their proportions just seem so strange, don't they? Oh, play for longer. Come on. Come on. I was so happy that we came across that. I was hoping they'd play for a little bit longer. Go with the ball machine. Do something. Yes. Then he's like, what is this thing? Yes! Aw, that ended so abruptly. That was... I'm glad we caught that. This guy... This guy's channeling my vibes right now. Feel you, buddy. I feel the exact same way. Oh, great. Hey, I think he left a little gift. Hey. That kid was definitely making a poop joke, right? Undeniably. It looks pleased, though. Good for him. Crowds over here not too big. I was happy to see a couple of guests down over here. That was nice. Whoops, back up over this way. Well, at least the, uh, the papers are getting privacy. Can't complain about that. And it is now June of year 19. Give me my baby. My baby, I want my baby. Probably gonna wait until the end of the month, aren't you? Watch we well, it's not like missing the birth is a big deal because I, I I doubt there's like a unique animation. I'm sure it's just gonna like pop up next to its mum, but it'd be funny if we like completely miss it for some other reason. babies. That was a lot of babies. I don't think we're going to have to deal with their uh, maturing today. There you are. I was like, where's your other half? Yeah, pretty happy with this space. All those tippy taps. Food coming? Nah, just to clean up. They don't have that many, yeah, they don't have any, like, new toys. I guess there's a scratching tree or whatnot. Oh, you can just block passage into the water. Oh. You do whatever you need to do if you're gonna drop one of these. Oh my god. Okay. Totally worth the wait. <laughs> 100% worth the wait. Look at how cute this thing is. Oh my god. I'm losing my mind. Oh my god, this is so cute. Oh. <laughs> like staring right at the camera. A little tail as well. Go for a swim. Go for it, buddy. Come on. Come on. Literally getting his feet wet.
<laughs> so dark. Look at that smile. Even though the eyes like move around and stuff, you know? Like the eyeball itself, how it rotates and looks around. There we go, into the water. <laughs> looks terrified, it's like, oh my god, this is not natural. That's not natural. Swimming animation. You gonna hop out the water as well? That dad coming to check on you? Nope. I'll loop around. Well, folks. I think uh, with the arrival of this baby, it is time for us to say farewell to our baby. This has been quite the ride. This zoo has grown <laughs> like four or five times the size it was when we started this miniseries. But uh, this miniseries was always going to be, yes, a miniseries. And as such, it has come to an end. When the next DLC comes through, I think uh, maybe we'll continue to develop this zoo. I mean, y'all let me know what you think. We we'll continue to develop this zoo or we open up a new showcase zoo. I like the idea of continuing to develop this one. We can like build more on this side. Who knows what the next DLC will be, if it'll fit, or, you know, if there even will be one. I imagine there will be one. Um, but uh, it seems like many of you have enjoyed this format. Uh, Y'all have said repeatedly in the comments, you've said so during the, uh, like, the lead-up to this DLC launch as well. Quite a few of you mentioned during the Aquatic DLC that you quite like the format as well, so I think uh, all the signs are there that we keep this kind of a format going when more DLC comes out. I've had an absolute blast. It's been great not having, like, the restrictions of franchise mode and whatnot, just kind of unleashing and... and researching, learning, exploring ideas, concepts, cultures, and, and trying to interpret them uh, in Planet Zoo. Uh, I'm glad we got to spend some time looking at all the other animals from this DLC and from prior uh, DLC as well. It was a good time to like, good way to say goodbye, I suppose. On that note, folks, I suppose it is time to say goodbye to the zoo again. Later this week, at the same regular scheduled time, Planet Zoo live stream, it'll be a bit of a mixed sort of a planning session slash trade session. It'll be a couple of things. Uh, it'll help uh, me at least get sort of my head back in the game, back in the in the, in the mindset of, of running a franchise zoo. It'll also hopefully get us all kind of like just hanging out, just chilling for a bit as we run through a trade session. Uh, and uh, and yeah, we'll get the we'll hit the ground running as it were with that. I hope you had a good time, folks. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, it makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel. As always as well, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who have been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big ol' thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.